Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, September 24th, 2020. Darts highlights major themes include the nature of a disclosure, tajalli, and surah taha being played out in daily life. One of the points the Shaykh Qaddas Allah Sirahi made is that a disclosure of a name, when it descends from the sciences of uh, the realm of the divine names it descends from the name Ar-Rahman he says the sciences of the realm of authority the divine authority the realm of the throne the throne sciences they descend from the name the all merciful Ar-Rahman so when a murid has a vision of a cloud or al-amma or water he is within the arc of the noon of the name Ar-Rahman and he's drawing from the hidden alif of the name Ar-Rahman. And he's in separation. He has not yet uh, attained or he's not yet drawing from the name Allah. And he said that a murid always brings a divine name with him. He's a trace of a divine name when he enters into the zawiyah. And that the disclosure that he experiences from the name Ar-Rahman uh, comes about in this manner. It's it's drawn from the name from the hidden alif of Ar Rahman. But more directly, the disciple draws the tajalli from the name that they carry, which isn't necessarily the name Ar Rahman. So it might be, for instance, the name Al Malik, the King, uh, because the disciple is a hajir, like a carrier or a bearer of uh, the name Al Malik. And so he, he draws these disclosures from the name Al-Malik through Ar-Rahman. So he's a trace of the name Al-Malik. And his vision, you might say, stems from or harks back to Allah Ta'ala through the name Ar-Rahman. And, and you bring the name back to the named ultimately through the name Allah. Because Allah is the essence. And when the knowledge descends into the heart through a disclosure and the disciple reveres and magnifies, he gives ta'zim to that disclosure. Uh, he's not actually able to give ta'zim to the name itself because he doesn't know what the name is. He doesn't know what the name Allah is or his own name. When murids first used to come to the zawiyah, we used to tell them the name that they're carrying or, or a name that they're a trace of, and we don't do that anymore. When we put the fuqara into the khalwa, we say just invoke the name Allah and we don't, let the, we don't let them know the name and God will show them the name that the murid carries through the name Allah and we bring the murid from the tajallis of the name that they're carrying to the tajallis of the divine essence and this has proven to be a, a cleaner process for their wayfaring it's better than telling them something that they don't understand and then having them begin their wayfaring and then they turn away from us. And then the Shaykh said, in truth, I fear the fuqara. I fear from the fuqara. I fear that the fuqara will corrupt the principles of the path. However, I don't, I don't fear if, if they're going to attack me personally. It's, it's a fear for the path. But God, Allah Ta'ala, sifts the fuqara over time. And the tariqah is going through a period that's going to sift out or weed out uh, a lot of fuqara who are not worthy of the path of Allah. And this is one of the reasons why we say, just say istighfar, the salatul ibrahimiya, la ilaha illallah, alhamdulillah, shukrullah, and prostration, and we're done. We don't say invoke a specific name. Any mistake that the murid falls in is due to their deeds or some quality or some shortcoming but the murid will ultimately blame the sheikh and the murids are, are thick they they're not quick they don't understand these sciences and so this is why Sayyidina Musa tell, is told by Sayyidina Al-Khidr don't ask me any questions until I tell you لا تسألني عن شيء حتى أحدث لك منه ذكرى because you'll tire yourself. You yourself will tire your own self. So just follow and run the course with me. And be like my shadow. Because your goal is to pass away. Is fana. 
And when you arrive at the science of subsistence, of baqa, then it's easy. The importance of following and of maintaining fana, passing away annihilation and God as one's goal, is highlighted by the fact that the formula la ilaha illallah, the haylala, begins with a lamb of negation, no, la ilaha illallah. That's an allusion to fana. You need fana as a means of becoming a ruh. Because the ruh itself, the spirit, in it there's no doubt, there's no questioning, it's direct perception. And Sayyidina Musa والسلام, does not reach this station. And Khidr tells him in advance, don't ask me about anything. Because if you ask and divulge, your nafs will express itself. And it's better to just be my shadow. When you ask, you bring about plurality. Questions come from the intellect, from the heart, from the eye, from various parts of the human being. And I don't mean don't ask a question in the Q&As, for instance, right now. I mean the murids who say, if the Sheikh only did this, if he only did that, they bring about this uh, multiplicity or plurality of the layers of their nafs and of their intellect and, and of their thought process, and they impose that upon wayfaring, upon suluk, spiritual traveling. And the Sheikh, because of this multiplicity that the murid has in his mind, in his heart, the Sheikh responds, uh, to the same questions from many different angles because of the multiplicity within the murid. Now, the murid imagines himself that, that the tariqah is somehow going to prosper and do better with their help. Maybe if we change the way the sheikh does things or the way he runs things, things will work better. Uh, the sheikh says, go back to Surah Taha that we're reading and uh, in which we sent down the Secrets of the Lam al Aishq or Lam al Qabd, and you'll see that Sayyiduna Musa والسلام, he leaves Sayyidina Harun behind because Sayyidina Harun is his closest copy, the, the nearest one to him, his closest shadow. And what happens? The Samiri appears, and this Samiri, the Samaritan, uh, the verse says, then he brought forth for them, for Musa's community, a calf as a mere body that load, جَسَدَ اللَّهُ خوار, the, a, a calf, that sort of a golden calf that made a sound. Now the Sheikh asks the murids, he says, who is the Samiri in terms of wayfaring? Spiritually speaking, who is he? One murid says he's a nafs, the other one says it's someone who breaks their oath of allegiance, a, a third murid said he's the Dajjal, and the Sheikh says the Samiri is part of Sayyidina Musa's community. He was saved by Musa himself. He was spared the being killed at the hands of Pharaoh. He saw the splitting of the sea. He's one of the followers and beloveds of Sayyidina Musa. We are now reading the secret of uh, Lam al-Qabd, or the second secret of the divine name, through Surah, Mu- through Surah Taha. And everything in Surah Taha will appear in this phase of Lam al that we are passing through as a tariqah and as individuals and as a world and you must read Surah Taha and you read it from the basmala to the end and that's your reading I, I don't mean just read through it I mean be attentive and live it and apply it and when you see a problem in your practice or a problem in the foundations of the Lam al that you're in right now Strengthen yourself through Surah Taha. This is the closest Surah to you. And you have to be subtle in these matters and perceptive. You have to keep your eye on the Shaykh and tread very carefully and identify problems in relation to the Surah. And just as Sayyidina Musa والسلام, leaves his community for a while and he leaves Sayyidina Harun والسلام, in charge, I'm going to leave you for a while as well just like Sayyidina Musa did. And where does he go? He goes to his Lord. He goes to pure Tawheed. And I'm going to do that too, and I'll leave you behind. And I'll leave you there for a while. There is no reading of Surah Taha. There is no reading of Lam al-Ishq without Sayyidina Harun 
and without the Samiri. These are parts of the disclosures of the Tajalliyat of Surah Taha. And these characters must appear. And now the Samiri has appeared. The slander has begun. This slander was uh, leveled against the Shaykh and some Fuqara by someone who was part of the community, one of the followers within the circle of the Tariqah, a former Murid. And now we're waiting for Sayyidina Harun to appear. We're waiting for the allusion, for the Ishara. The Samiri has appeared right before your eyes. And your unwillingness to obey and to listen, your rebelliousness, the fact that many Fukhara stood up in defense of their own selves, many refused to stand up in defense of the Shaykh. When we reach the verses of Sayyidina Harun, I'm going to stop and I'll wait for the Tajalli. So when I say read Surah Taha, I say apply it, not just memorize it. And you keep working on Surah Taha and contemplating it and finding yourself in it until I change the mansion, the manzila, the way station that we're in right now. We are currently on the third day in the zodiac of Al-Burj or Burj Al-Mizan and the second day in the zodiac of Al-Sammak in the month of Safar followed by Rabi' al-Awwal. This is the cycle that we're in, and this is the cycle that's appropriate for Lamul Ishq. And on good days, the Fuqara will say, on days of divine beauty, they'll say, we want to walk to the Zawiyah barefoot. We want to go see the Shaykh on our knees. And then the Shaykh puts a tiny thorn on the road of Lamul Ishq, and everybody complains. I cannot remove the thorn from the path. It's part of Lamul Ishq. But I can remove you. The descent or the coming down of Surah Taha, just like the descent or the revelation of, of the Qur'an itself, it came down through causal circumstances of revelation, as Abu nuzul You need a sabab, a causal circumstance, for the revelation to descend, so that you can taste and live the sweetness and illusions of the Qur'an. And now you're living the tanazzul, the descent of Surah Taha in your life. And you need a sabab for it. There has to be a causal circumstance for the, the descent of the surah right now where else can I find a sabab in the first century you're reading the same surah from the first century in this century in the 14th Islamic century and so Taha is now your life it's your biography and you yourself have to find your own element or who you are in that surah be Sayyiduna Musa be Sayyiduna Harun or be the oath Taha the two letters or the burning tree, consider your shaykh absent from the scene. He's just translating and helping you interpret your own role in this Surah Taha as it's descending. He lets the Surah descend into uh, the, the, the hearts of the Fuqara and for them to taste it directly. The shaykh also said that the tajallis, these disclosures that you experience at night, they're like charges you you replenish the illuminative uh, faith that you have at night in your night visuals and that that tajalli that you charge yourself with at night in your night visual is a descent it's a tanazul from the shaykh into your heart and the next day when you go about your day after your night visual of of tajallis of disclosures you bring down from your heart or you apply, you, you exteriorize those disclosures uh, which are descent from the Shaykh to your heart, you, you exteriorize them onto your own horizon. So your night translates into your day and it projects out and reflects your day. And you bring out the inner state of your heart onto your limbs and your tongue. And for those who commit a sin during the day, your night visual is a cleansing of that day. So you, you cleanse your day at night. It's like the Samiri. He loved the calf in his heart. He had a love of wealth and money and so on and gold. And had he kept it within his heart, had he not expressed it outwardly with the golden calf during the day, he, he would have just remained with the community of Sayyidina Musa, despite the, the whisperings within him. Uh, however, he doesn't do that. And then because he brings out that uh, what, what he has inside him uh, onto his horizons. Uh, he receives uh, the verse, 
in Nalakantakula la Misas, he's basically expelled. He's someone, he, he becomes uh, anathematized and you can't uh, respond to him and speak to him. And, and he's expelled from the circle of uh, Sayyidina Musa. So the Tajallis at night will reflect on your day. And if your day is falling short, you have to clean them out at night. اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم بارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حمد